a very warm welcome to the art vlog with me, George Dopamine. Today you find me in the leafy streets of Pimlico heading towards Great Tate Britain, where I'm going to be exploring a show by the German-born British artist Walter Sickert. In my mind, Sickert is an underrated artist in the sense that while art connoisseurs often love him, he hasn't taken root in the popular imagination in the same way that many of his continental peers, all the way from Monet and the Impressionists through Degas and Van Gogh and the Post-Impressionists to Picasso and Modernists have. People have heard of those artists and know about them, whereas Sickert is less widely known. Well, I'm hoping for lots, a huge range of the work from across his career. This is one of the biggest London retrospectives of recent times. I must say I didn't get to what sounded like an amazing exhibition up in Liverpool at the Walker Gallery. Um, I'm expecting muted tones, um, some nudes and obviously many self-portraits as, as, as this famously comedian-like artist changed his persona and his guise. Um, the show is on until the 18th of September, so you've got a long time to come to, to see it. This show is £18 to get in, £17 with concessions. So come and join me as we head into the hallowed halls of the original Tate Gallery, now called Tate Britain, and explore this exhibition by Walter Sickert, that enigmatic master. <laughs> So a few highlights there from the Walter Sickert show that I've just been into. Um, I would say first of all that it's a really um, great comprehensive retrospective of his career. For me, the highlight of this show is actually the curation. It doesn't so much plod through um, Sickert's life as take themes and um, allow you to see how he returned to these themes over certain parts of his career. You start with some of these wonderful self-portraits showing Sickert as the ultimate chameleon. He was an actor before he was a painter. And you see that in the way he changes his image throughout his life. Lots of this is very, very self-conscious. Look at this one, this portrait painted in 1882 of him as a young man. And then this one in 1896 as his marriage is disintegrating thanks to having several affairs. You can see him sort of looking worried over his shoulder. And then this one, which is rather sarcastically called Juvenile Lead. Sickart never made it as an actor. Um, he, 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 did some, he did some bit parts, really, in some of Henry Irving's shows. But this one here, you can sort of see him almost in his prime. And then later on, this one called The Servant of Abraham from 1929, where he's portraying himself as an old man, as a biblical figure. And then even more fragility in this self-portrait from 1935. This first one is an explosive start because it gets you to know the... Um, it gets you to know the artist in a way which then takes you through the rest of the show. And um, the second room is, is, is all about the inspiration, especially of Whistler and the influence, should I say, of Whistler to Sickert. Sorry, the sun's going to come in now. Um, and I thought this one was, I mean, the paintings were not great, but they were important for showing the, the, the influences that he faced. Um, but then after that, you're drawn into this wonderful third room, which is all about Sickert's love of the music hall. Just have a look at this painting for a second. It's called Little Dot at Hetherington at the Bedford Music Hall, painted in 1888 to 89. Um, it shows the love of that he had. And have a look at this, the PS Wings in the Opium Mirror, shows that he's using mirror imagery to play with our sense of perspective, because these gentlemen are actually not looking at the woman on stage. One of his most famous works is in this room as well. It's called The Brighton um, Pierrots. It was painted in the middle of the First World War in 1915. 
um, Sickert was in Brighton and apparently he went down to this outdoor venue by the sea every day for five weeks and, and took sketches and then painted this really famous painting with the brooding sky in the background that you can hopefully see here. Um, I also love the fact that he doesn't just focus on the stage, he focuses on the cheap seats. Have a look at these two pieces, one from France, one from Britain, which have a look at the gallery as well um, of these shows. This is a fantastic room, these paintings are pleasing, they're colourful, um, excuse me, and they are really, they're really, really um, beautiful bits of social history as well. Room four is a bit of a disappointment. He wasn't a great portraitist. For me, um, Sickert was a great self-portraitist, but not a great portraitist. So I didn't enjoy this room as much, but there are some great um, pictures in here. This one, a particular favorite of Aubrey Beardsley, uh, which you can hopefully see here. Um, room five in, and, uh, is really, really interesting because it opens up to a, a, a part of Sicker that I don't know as much, and that is him as a painter of urban scenes. Look at these two of St. Mark's Cathedral in Venice, for example, or these scenes here from Dieppe. And he even painted some of London. Bearing in mind he was a member of the Camden Town Group, he did not um, paint many pictures of London, but here is a rare one. He painted many, many interior scenes, by the way. Um, and so this was like a, this was after, after coming from the portraits, which were very insular, this is like opening up, like breathing, um, in a way which is, is really interesting. And then you're, you're, you're sort of taken to what me is the heart of the show, his, um, his exploration of the nude and what the curators have done I really enjoy as you're coming in you're confronted straight away by a portrait by Lucia a nude by Lucian Freud and and that's obviously signifying the massive influence that Sickert had all of his nudes as you can see here are not glamorous pictures we're talking soiled sheets and cheap beds this one for example is called um, the iron bedstead this one is called Mornington Crescent nude as well and but what I love about about these is their honesty they're very very beautiful and not surprisingly they absolutely shocked the English press um, <laughs> who called them tawdry and I'm gonna put a quote up now with and obviously these these were better received in France than than, than Britain um, this this big gallery ends with probably his most famous um, series of paintings called the Cam the Camden Town Murder Scenes or the Camden Town Murder Scenarios, and um, these um, these pictures left me, I have to be honest, with a little bit of a sour taste because in my mind, Sickert was not painting this uh, about this horrible murder where a poor girl, Emily Dinner, Dinnock, was, was brutally killed. I, I think he adapted these and almost piggybacked on the notoriety because the press obviously got wind of this. And as a result, you know, it leaves me feeling a bit uneasy, but I suppose if we're being generous, we can say that he's not so much interested in the scene itself, thank goodness, but in the, um, in the relationship and the tension that built up to this scene. After the nudes, you're into one of my favourite rooms, a series of big paintings called Modern Conversation Pieces. Pieces like this one, Off to the Pub, or this one, which is, you know, you can tell these are all about relationships um, and interior scenes and narrative paintings. And it's quite interesting that for an artist that lived through the First World War but was too old to serve, the only sort of military, one of the only military paintings is this one, The Soldiers of King Albert at the Ready. Um, the final word is called transportation, and this is where it does become a bit chronological. These pieces are pieces that Sagat painted in the 1930s. And um, what's really interesting about these is that he started using um, like press cuttings and photo montage, and the gallery makes a really nice link to his influence on pop artists like Andy Warhol, who did the same uh, later on and said that they couldn't have basically produced their work without, without Sickert. I was a bit um, disappointed that there wasn't more echo paintings. These were paintings where he kind of took Victorian um, magazine clippings, often very mel melodramatic, like this one, and, um, and then adapted them to modern art. 
But having said that, um, this show overall is a wonderful opportunity to get to know this artist. There are over 125 pieces across eight rooms. I really enjoyed being in his world. Very different to the sun-drenched streets of London today, but um, it was a fantastic show. And I hope that um, if you do come, you will be able to spend lots of time absorbing these works and you're taken to so many different styles of art, so many different interesting subject matters from, as I said in my introduction, an underrated artist. Um, the show is on, as I say, until the 18th of September, so we've got quite a long time. It is £18, £17 for reductions, and um, do come along. Do, do, I would give it, as I say, a really solid 8 out of 10. Will I be back? Yes, I think I will. Um, do remember to subscribe to the art vlog and press that notification bell. We are going to be back at Tate Britain next week to see the much anticipated Cornelia Parker show. And I might even pop back into Sicket that early then. So do come along, do get, keep getting out there exploring our wonderful art scene in the UK. And take care of yourself until next time.